Hello and welcome to another video in the Halloween Cat series. Drawings of cats paying tribute to some of my favorite horror movies. This time it's The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Uh, it's one of my favorite silent films and it's probably the biggest example of German Expressionism in film. In the 1920s this movement developed and it's very, very characteristic. And it has influenced the work of a lot of filmmakers, but most particularly, I would think, the work of Tim Burton. In doing these pictures, the part that I have the most fun with is figuring out how to adapt them and what kind of cats to use for each uh, for each character. Uh, in this case, I thought that Dr. Caligari would be appropriate to have uh, the appearance of a, an exotic short hair cat. Cesare the Sonambulist, over to the right, is a bit more of a generic type of cat, but I went for a specific spot pattern, and you'll see that later. But I do have a lot of fun doing these, uh, from the conception to actual drawing, finding the references. It's a, it's a process that I really enjoy. The actor who played this character of Cesare the Sonambulist was Conrad Veidt. I mentioned him earlier in uh, another video. He played Gwynplaine in Universal's The Man Who Laughs, and he was also in Casablanca, actually. He was one of the main antagonists. He was the, the Nazi officer. And he's one of those people I mentioned who were great eye actors. And that was really important to be able to show here, especially in this scene. This is one of the more intense and one of the most famous scenes of the movie where Cesare wakes up. There is a certain expression that cats have sometimes where their eyes go towards the sides and they look they look very peculiar and I thought that expression was very appropriate for this scene because both of these characters are supposed to be deranged. So I try to convey that in their eyes, in their, their gaze, especially Caligari. He's he's the one who's doing, he's the one in control. So he's the most deranged, I would say. Cesare, I would argue that he's a bit of a tragic figure because he's under the control of Dr. Caligari. He's not a free agent. So he's a bit, it's a bit sad. I, I find him a bit sad, like a lot of great film monsters. Now, in the case of the colors, it's difficult when you're doing a picture based on uh, a black and white movie. It's difficult to figure out which colors to use. In this scene, Cesare is kept in a, in a wooden cabinet and drawing wood and... and, and Painting the texture is one of my favorite things. I, I enjoy that process a lot. So I couldn't pass up this opportunity. The eyes of the cats are also very important. And the shadows. German Expressionism is all about these stark shadows, the contrast, the asymmetrical lines. And normally I would have used India ink but I wanted to do a little bit of a statement with black watercolor. There's a big taboo uh, uh, surrounding black watercolor. And of course, you wouldn't use it for darkening a color. But sometimes some artists go as far as to say, never, never use black watercolor. And for this scene, I thought, it would be appropriate. The colors of the characters are also a bit tricky. You gotta figure out what would they look like. 
in this case, since they are German actors, it's a bit easier. And uh, I thought an orange tabby style of short hair would be would be nice for Caligari. And I went for a mask styled uh, spots for for the Cenambulist. His whole image uh, is very influential. You can see that in you can see the influence it's had on, for example, Edward Scissorhands and almost every Tim Burton character which has those circles under the eyes. In the case of Cesare, it's actually more like triangles, but um, you can still see that, that influence. And I would argue that Tim Burton's uh, design for the Penguin on, on Batman Returns is very reminiscent of Dr. Caligari. Cesare, of course, is dressed all in black, and um, I wanted to do that, a black, a black cat. But I also wanted it to be a different black from Caligari. Of course, they're both dressed in dark colors. So for Cesare, I went for a bluish black. I thought it would be more appropriate for the character. Again, he's really not a free agent. He's under the control of Caligari, so... I don't see him as a full evil character, but more as a tragic monster. So I thought the bluish tint would be appropriate for, for conveying that idea that he's not evil, he's just under control of somebody. And Caligari's outfit, I did... Uh, I went for a dirty looking dark gray because he's the one who's actually corrupt and he's the one who's actually uh, committing the crimes. And if anybody's evil in this story, it's him. Watching this movie as a modern audience, of course, some people think that it's a bit of a cliche, The especially the ending, there's a twist ending. And uh, I gotta say, if this were a modern movie, I would definitely say this is a terrible ending. But in those days, this wasn't so much of a cliche. This is 1920. This movie is actually 100 years old. So they were actually inventing a lot of these conventions that now are considered cliche. I saw somebody compare Shutter Island to this movie, and I can see the similarities. There is a lot... Uh, in common there. I've never seen anybody say that it was on purpose, but they do have a lot of similarities. But again, that's the that's the beauty of silent film. They were inventing a lot of things and, and we can still see their influence today. I'm very sorry for the change in quality in the picture. Uh, I'm using my phone as a camera and there was some problem that I couldn't fix. I really don't know what happened and hopefully I won't run into this problem again. I would like to get a better camera so that I would, I can be able to record videos for you without them being bad quality. But um, hopefully you can still see enough of the details. And of course you'll see the finished picture when we when we finish. Um, I'm just going over, again, you go over the details one by one. <clears throat> you build up the colors. You build up the colors, build up the textures. That's the way to do it. Like I said, the wood is my favorite part. I, I really enjoy painting the texture of wood, especially this type of stylized wood. It's the cartoony wood, which I thought was very appropriate for this. It's also kind of difficult when you adapt uh, the material to something like this, where it's because they're cats, it's supposed to be whimsical and funny. But at the same time, I want to capture the essence of what the original is about and, and especially in something like so surreal like Dr. Caligari it's 
I think it lets it, it lends itself to something like this. Yeah. The fact that they are cats only adds to the surrealism of the scene. So I'm very, very happy with this result. Again, sometimes the, <clears throat> selecting the colors is very diff difficult. Um, especially in things, when it comes to people, you can more or less figure out what you're going to do, clothes, that sort of thing. But something like the background, I had a, uh, I had a hard time deciding what background to use and in those days they would use tinted film to express certain ideas or to show a certain time of day or a specific part of the film and the copy that I watched the print that I watched this scene was tinted in red so I, I went for an orangey red because also there's a bit of sepia there and, and you will see that when, when I'm done with, with the picture. But I think that's, especially in this specific picture, that was the, the hardest part to decide what color to do the background. That's why I left it for the end. Here I'm just adding some of the shadows. And again, because it's such a stylized work, it's easy to, to do something very dramatic and it looks appropriate. Here's my favorite part of the process, as I've said before. It's so satisfying to see that white line emerge. So I am still going to do another Halloween cat picture for the next video. And during the week, I'll make another one that I won't be making a video of. But you will... You will be able to see it if you support me on Patreon. I would really appreciate it and it would help me get better equipment so I can get better videos out there. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you liked it and I will see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>